Hey everyone, welcome to the Electric Supercar Channel. This week we're going to talk about stabilized carbon fiber. Let's get to it. Presented by Fiberglass. We are going to get right into comparing the carbon fiber, but we will be making a mold and actually using the carbon fiber in a layup. So stay tuned to the very end to see the final result. So this is a two by two twill, 3K stabilized carbon fiber. So let's see what that means. So how is this different than a regular carbon fiber? Okay, on this side, I've got the 3K two by two twill weave, but this is not the stabilized. Let me show you some of the key differences and why you may wanna consider the stabilized carbon fiber. So I did not do this on purpose, but you'll see that there's a distortion of the weave pattern right here. And that's just because something got pulled or tugged or something, and it's just kind of disturbed ever so slightly. You could probably work this back and get it uh, pretty normal looking. Um, but some of the challenges are when you're working in a mold and you're trying to get the things to lay just right, this will happen quite a bit. All right, one of the other things, I use this uh, tape. Um, number one, it helps you cut a straight line, but number two, it helps uh, phrase. So you can see here, uh, basically, it'll start to fray pretty quickly. Um, so one end is bound, and if you don't have the other edge kind of uh, taped up, when you start maneuvering, these, these will get kind of out of place pretty quick. They'll start to lose their weave. So let's go over to the stabilized carbon fiber and show you what that's got. So again, this has got the same weave pattern, the same uh, carbon count. But what it has is you'll see it's got this kind of, this is a, I'll call it protective layer. And on this side, it actually has a extremely thin veil of carbon fiber. And what that does is it keeps everything together. You'll notice this does not have any of that edge fray tape and um, you can move it around and it kind of stays, stays together. So I'll zoom in so you can see this. So naturally you're gonna wanna put this side kind of outward facing. Um, so this side will probably go down in your mold. But this side, it keeps everything kind of nice and even as far as the weave pattern. So it's got all the same strength characteristics, but just uh, makes it so it's always gonna be a nice weave. All right, I've got uh, two pieces here. Again, this top one here is the regular. And uh, just to show you kind of some of the handling characteristics. So if I kind of pull it one way or stretch it, you see all the weave kind of just so again, the weave kind of moves quite a bit, um, which can distort your pattern. The stabilize just really keeps its uh, weave pattern. And so again, uh, really anxious to work with this. Let's see how it goes. I was asked to see if I had any projects that I could use some new carbon fiber on. One of the things that came to mind are these grills. Um, I really don't need any airflow there, but um, I do kind of like the idea of an accent. So I'm gonna actually make a carbon fiber piece that fills in these slots. So I made these panel covers a long time ago. They've kind of served their purpose and something needed to fill that space. So I'm just gonna take these off and start the process of making a new panel. All right, I have some of this mix and pour foam. And what I'm gonna try and find out is if there are substances that it kind of releases from better. So I'm gonna try um, painter's tape, some packaging tape. I'll also try a panel that I put this wax release agent on. All right, the foam is hard. So we'll see if any of these uh, worked better than another. So painter's tape, not too bad. Yeah, the uh, packaging tape actually works really well. And then we'll see how the wax did. So I'm gonna say the wax probably did not the best. I mean, I think you can still get this off. I don't think it's like permanently on there, but um, packaging tape looks like it did the best. So what I've done here is I put the clear packaging tape right on the surface of the car itself so that I can get a good form from the mix and pour. I've got this cardboard that will be kind of the backside and I'm gonna pour it 
in between those two. So in between this packaging tape and the cardboard. Something tells me this may be a disaster, but we're gonna give it a go. All right, the foam is now hard. We are going to see if we can get it off the car. Something tells me there'll be a few spots where it's stuck, but uh, that's okay. We still have some paint correction to do on the hood. All right, so things came off fairly clean. There's just a little, I don't know, a little piece there, one right there, and that's about it. So I think those should be pretty easy to clean up. We'll start looking at this guy and start shaping it. Now that we've got this off the car, we need to make a few trims. So this was actually a little bit too proud. Um, so we need to kind of make that a little bit lower. And then we're gonna actually smooth it all out with some drywall compound. gone through about two sessions of putting on the drywall compound and sanding. So again, it's starting to look pretty smooth, pretty good. Probably do it maybe one or two more times. Um, again, it's a lot easier to work with drywall compound because it sands very quick, very easy, and it's very easy to apply, very cheap. And once you kind of get into the fiberglass, it's a lot harder to work with. So I got some of the body filler on, so now this is kind of a more solid surface. Um, there are a few just imperfections that I'm gonna do some of the glazing putty. After that, I'll seal it with a coat of primer. We just put a coat of primer on this. So it's looking pretty good. Once it sets up, I'm sure there'll be a few areas we wanna to touch up. So we'll touch those up, put another coat of primer on, and then make the mold from this. I have done some touch up on this. So we'll give it one more coat of the primer and then we'll be ready to make the mold. All right, you may have noticed a different video location, uh, the beginning of the video versus now. We have switched to the new garage. So if you are just watching this for the first time, go back and see the garage videos. Pretty cool. All right, this is looking pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a couple of layers of wax on, and then we are going to put on the PVA. Now with the PVA, we're gonna actually use my spray gun this time and do several light coats, maybe like five, seven, something like that, because the challenges with the wax, um, all kind of wet things want to beat up. You really don't want a beaded surface. You kind of have to really mist it on and do several different layers.
here we are. This is the mold. So we'll try and take it off. Hopefully everything went okay. All right, here it is. The wax and the PVA did their job. So go ahead and wash this off, see what it looks like. See what kind of surface finish we gotta fix up. I'm trying to see how well you can see that, but um, finish isn't very good. This is just, I think, from the PVA. Again, it just doesn't lay down really smooth. So I think in the future, I'll probably just rely on the wax. Um, I've just never had great success with the PVA giving me a good surface. All right, what a mess. Uh, again, just disappointed with the PVA texture. So what I did is I got some glazing putty and kind of put it down. And you can see all these little pinholes. It's just ridiculous. So the reason I'm doing the glazing putty, I'm actually kind of using it almost like uh, like a guide coat, except for it's actually, the, the putty's actually filling in the bottom, all of these pinholes. And so um, I'll go ahead and sand and try and get this smooth. And I think this just kind of, lessens how much I have to sand. All right, here's the part. It looks pretty good. There are a few places where I've got some, I call it bridging. So this is places where I didn't get the fabric quite down in the corner enough. So that's like uh, right here. So you can just see just a little bit there. And again, it's got resin in the fabric. That's not the problem. It's not a strength thing. It's just kind of a cosmetic thing. And so what I'll do is I'll kind of just break some of these corners and then I'll go over it once more with some more epoxy. And we'll let that set up and get it ready for clear coat. I tried a little bit of cleanup. Um, this is just not gonna be quite up to my standard. So I'm gonna go ahead and do another layup. On my channel, I show you the entire process, not just the good process. So uh, I've got a lot to learn and we're just gonna do it again.
Here they are in the hood. I'm actually in the process of doing some paint correction on the hood. That's why it doesn't look super shiny. And I think the angle I'm at, you see a lot more reflection than I think you normally will. All right, that does it for this time. I hope you learned a lot about the stabilized carbon fiber. Um, it's a cool process, cool product. Um, if you've got use for it, look up fiberglass.com. They've got basically everything you could need for a project like this. Um, they got the pour and fill foam. They've got the fiberglass, fiberglass resin, gel coat, carbon fiber. So if you can use them for your application, look them up, fiberglass.com. That'll do it for this time. See you next time.